at this. We were looking for cheetah, but we found a leopard. Well, Andrew found a leopard for us. Uh, Andrew is the guide from Cheetah Plains, and it's my favorite leopard. Her name is Inkanyeni. Uh, which means marula tree and that's what she's sleeping in and that's how she got her name she is really fond of big marula trees and she looks like she is quite quite full so she's just relaxing in the tree and one of the reasons leopards like to sleep in trees is they're a little bit out of the way of a lot of the biting insects there's a bit of a stronger breeze and the smaller biting insects will battle to fly there hello serenity and serenity would like to know can you find leopards all over africa you can serenity they occur throughout africa um, the only places that you don't really find them is in the, the truest desert, the driest desert, but they occur throughout the savanna regions and in the rainforests, and they are very adaptable cats and can live in a whole host of different climates, even very high in the mountains. But their favorite type of climate is savanna bushveld, like we're sitting in now, and in this type of area, you get the biggest leopards. Now Sadie's wondering if this leopard can see in the dark. Well, indeed she can, but when you say see in the dark, they can see about eight to ten times better than we can in the dark. But uh, there has to be some form of ambient light for her to catch. Now I was just looking around while we were sitting here, and... One must remember that the safari is not only about the very big things, sometimes it's about the very tiny things. And I've found on a piece of grass next to us, I'm trying to get him to see, see his nose, there we go, um, a little weevil who's eating the grass flowers. Tiny little weevil. Hey little guy. Enjoying uh, some digitaria or finger grass. There we go. I'll put him back on the grass. Now, being on a live safari, you literally never know what's around the next corner. And I said we were looking for elephant and cheetah, and uh, we have come across the exquisite Inkanyeni. So while it's hot, she's going to snooze, and as it gets cooler, she might come down the tree, she might go off hunting. Uh, you never know what's going to happen next. Oh, doesn't she look very comfortable up in that tree? Nice breeze keeping her cool. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, there we go. It seems to be, sorry about that, seems to be a little bit loose connection with my earpiece. Hi Ava. Ava would like to know how long do leopards sleep for in the day? Well they don't only sleep in the day, they can also sleep at night. On average they'll sleep for about 18 hours a day. So they are expert nappers. As you can see, even though she is napping, watch her ears. They're always on the move. Well, hello, Rachel and Pam. Rachel and Pam would like to know, how old is this leopard? Well, if I remember correctly, she is 11 years old. And she's got a baby at the moment. Uh, his 
name is Votomi, and he's about 15 months old. So he could be very close around here, or he could be somewhere where she's left him while she's gone off hunting. Naya would like to know how many babies can a leopard have at one time? Well, normally it's one or two babies, sometimes as many as three, but never more than that uh, under normal circumstances. And Naya would also like to know how many babies can they have over their lifetime? Well, they're not. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I swallowed a fly. <coughs> a fly just flew straight into my mouth while I was talking there. Okay, I'm back. So uh, they normally only have their first baby at around three or four years old, and then it's normally caught it every three years from then they can raise. So they can possibly have uh, two, and then, and then six, another two, eight, another two, ten, another two. So we're looking maybe eight, eight to eight to maximum uh, twelve babies over their lifetime. But most of their babies uh, will die when they're quite young. Uh, most leopard babies don't reach a year old. So she had two cubs, a female cub and a male cub, and only the male cub survived to be older than a year. So there's a couple of different reasons why a leopard will sleep in a tree, and Bryson was wondering. So uh, one, it's generally a little bit cooler. There's a, a nice strong wind up there, and it keeps them away from a lot of the biting insects. And another reason uh, is protection from hyenas and lions and uh, other, other predators. So she's very safe up in that tree. Uh, she's probably about 20 foot from the ground. So very, very high up in the tree. And there's very little that's going to get to her when she's that high. Now, Journey is wondering, do we check on the animals every day? Well, we try to. Sometimes they're difficult to find. So sometimes if she was lying in the grass, we'd probably drive past and not see her. Uh, the only reason she, we spotted or Andrew spotted her is because she's up in the tree. But we do track them. We follow their footprints. Uh, we would love to check on all the animals every day. But sometimes they avoid us and we're unable to find them. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it's been wonderful having all the schools with us. It's been great to have you. And for the rest of your day, just because Journey is there, Safari and Gemma on the rest of your day and your school day. But um, from Viam and myself and the rest of the Safari Live team, bye. <laughs>
I'm trying to decide now. She's been snoozing here for quite a while. I was thinking about maybe having a dash down to see if there are any cheetah on the open areas, uh, but maybe not. Mm, we'll have to wait and see. I think let's stay here a little bit longer. If she comes down and into this grass and we're not here, she's gone, vanished. Okay. She's, as I said, quite high up in the tree, about 20 foot. And she looks exceptionally comfortable. Quite a gusty wind around, and but still quite warm. Hi, a Gemma, who's a new viewer, and welcome to Safari Live. Uh, Gemma would like to know how long do leopard cubs stay with their mother for? Well, Gemma, it depends. The females generally become independent uh, between 16 and 18 months old. Uh, the males will stay sometimes up to about two and a half years. And so the little girls leave earlier than the boys. The boys just don't like to leave their mothers. Sounds familiar. She is really, really fast asleep. So beautiful. And looks like she's quite well fed at the moment. Now she has been mating with quarantine uh, already a couple of times. So it'll be interesting to see at what age young Vutome becomes independent because he should be what now about 15 months. So it's not unusual for female leopards to start mating at that time. She quite often they will not conceive even though she is mating. Now, if we look down the, the branch, and you can see a little bit lower there. Oh, there we go, well spotted. <laughs> there's a skink on the tree. Uh, I wonder if he knows that there's a ferocious leopard just above him. But I don't think Nkanyeni would take too much notice of a little skink. But a bit further down as well, you can actually see where she's climbed. Uh, you can see the little pieces of marula that have come out uh, as she went up there. And there's some older climbing, so I don't think it's her first, first time in this tree. And this marula looks like it's full of bora beetles and it's probably expired. I didn't see any leaves on it. Oh, there's a dove there. You got him, Vim? Uh, oh, where's my hand? There. Yeah, Cape Turtle Dove. Keep the bird list ticking while in a leopard sighting. Also probably oblivious that there is a cat beneath. Oh, tired kitty. So Vitomi was last seen I think yesterday, but to the north of us and in Coral. And quarantine was seen this morning in and in, in Torchwood this morning. So probably about 900 meters, or maybe a little bit further, maybe just over a kilometer from here. Uh, quarantine was seen. Uh, it's a similar area to where Butomi was last seen. But it's quite a different day and we keep watching the weather and the clouds seem to be breaking up. There we go, you can see beautiful afternoon and I'm hoping that uh, Nkanyen does head out on the hunt a little bit later. Hi, 
Nev, uh, Nev has uh, embraced our our birding competition, and Nev would like to know: Are we going to count the just the first person to see the bird, or every single bird we see for the month? I think it's every single bird. So you're looking at a total bird list, and they have to be live, uh, they have to be on camera uh, for them to count, because we can't just say, "Well, I saw." a lesser spotted flamingo uh, uh, and if it's not on the camera it doesn't count so hopefully we will do that and Nev's actually made a spreadsheet which sounds like the best way to do it uh, to keep track I think Tristan might be in the lead but I think uh, for now but I'll, I'll, I'll take him on I'll take him I've still got the rest of this afternoon to beat him Tristan says it doesn't count if he's not out and about. Well, of course it does because the birds he saw uh, this morning while I was not out uh, were counted. And uh, he's just hanging out with two birds in the final control. Of course, those birds have no feathers and they talk a lot in my ear. And they bite, <laughs> according to VM. VM says the FC girls bite. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, well, I don't think Canyon's going to move too, too much now. I think we should go do a little a dash down to the open area, see if there's cheetah about, uh, and see what else is, and then we'll come back here uh, a little later. So hopefully she'll be on the move then. Bye-bye, pretty lady. You can see that's an upset squirrel tail. And uh, what would you do uh, if you came home after a hard day of for foraging for marula nuts and in your home was the big fat leopard? And every time she moves her tail, like she just did, there we go. Look at him. He's very upset about having a leopard in his tree. But she's completely ignoring him. <laughs> and I was hoping now that it's cooled down a bit, she might be thinking about coming down the tree, but she doesn't look like she's moving, even though there's a squirrel chitting at her. Chit, 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 chit. And because she's not moving too much, the squirrel's not alarming too heavily, I'm quite sure she's aware of its presence. She's barely moved a muscle since uh, we first saw her this afternoon. She's lying in the exact same spot. And as I said, the only thing that's changed is the, the squirrel, who's <laughs> most upset, but doesn't seem to really know what to do, because it's not alarming, a full alarm call. <laughs> I think... Imagine what's going through that squirrel's mind. Is that leopard alive? Is it alive? I think it's alive. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't want to take any chances, though. Now, as I said, there's quite a few holes in this marula, so I'm pretty sure one of them is that squirrel's home. Kanyeni looks so, so relaxed. Lovely golden light filtering through onto the side of her face. Looking in very good condition at the moment. Sitting side saddle, one would say, not draped all over, and there's just her tail dashed out the back.
Now, Leela says she thought that leopards were opportunists. Why does she not attempt the squirrel? Uh, well, it's the risk and reward. It would be quite difficult to catch on a, on a tree like that. The squirrel, squirrels are very quick. Uh, squirrels are normally the domain of, of, of a young leopards. And she's got a full belly. And as I say, the, the, the risk of falling and, and the reward of uh, one bite of a squirrel just are not appealing to her. And she is very full. And so far, the squirrel, I suppose, not making too much noise. But... It's just not worth worth uh, exciting the squirrel for going away. The amount of noise it would make would let everything know that she was here. And also just not worth uh, the effort of a morsel of that size. Well, not even a starter. Well... We've done a big circuit through cheese plans, and, and uh, we haven't seen much else, uh, just normless. And uh, of course, those lovely comb ducks, which we don't get to see too often. Poor squirrel. It's a lady squirrel, I think, not a, a boy squirrel. Now that flicking tail is a sign of distress. <laughs> it looks confused. Every time Kanyen's tail sort of just even blows in the wind, it gets a little bit more agitated. Well, we're going to sit here uh, and see what happens with the squirrel and in Kanyen. While we do that, Tristan's got something that's got a lot more legs than the leopard in the tree. More and more agita agitated as Nkanyen moves her tail a little bit more. So it's run out on a branch below her and keeps looking up. Oh, there we go. She's Every time she has a slight stretch or whatnot, the squirrel gets... Oh, now he could get very upset. No, she's still... I thought she might stand up for a second. She's just decided that her paw will be a very nice pillow. <laughs> that poor squirrel, its heart rate must be going through the roof and it seems to be confused about what to do. Oh, we've got something else arriving in the tree. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, wait for it to move again. There's a little chin spot battus that's just landed in the same tree as uh, the panicked squirrel and in Ganyen. Oh, did it fly away? Oh. Um, Shrama says, is it possible that the squirrel might have babies? That's why she won't leave. Oh, I think even if she doesn't, I think this is her, her roost and uh, she's come back and her nest is in here, so she could very well have babies or she could just be uh, coming back for a snooze as the sun starts setting. <laughs> I just want to see what happens if Nkanyen stands up, uh, how upset the squirrel will get. It doesn't look like Nkanyen's planning on moving any time too soon. She's looking very, very comfy. Hope you guys are getting some fantastic screenshots uh, of the, the lounging in Kanyeni. Where's that squirrel? She moved the other oh, so. Shame, poor squirrel. I'm 
just hear those little noises it's making. Not that full... Now, as you can see, in Kanyen's very, very comfortable. And J. Luke is wondering if I've ever witnessed a sleeping leopard fall. I have not. Uh, I've seen awake leopards fall while they've been playing and jumping about, but I've never seen or heard of a sleeping leopard falling out of a tree. Oh, she is so pretty. Absolutely exquisite and that soft late afternoon light that's filtering through the clouds. Well, we're going to stick out, stick it out here, see if anything else happens between the panicked squirrel and Inkanyeni. In the meantime, let's go see what Master Henry is up to. Well, she's still fast asleep. She stood up briefly, and uh, the panicky squirrel dived into a hole, and uh, then she went back to sleep. <laughs> so it doesn't look like she's going to get moving uh, before before dark. And I think we're going to probably meander on, see what else we can find. Uh, hopefully, there's uh, lots of other things that we'll see on our way back towards Juma. I was really hoping she was going to get moving, but unfortunately, not this time. Might have to come look for her bright and early tomorrow morning. Bye bye, madam. Not even a lift of the head as we start the car. She is extremely beautiful and extremely comfortable at this very moment.